All right, so we're here. We're here to hear not Pastor Nias, to hear what Jesus has to say to his people. Because you are God's people, and don't you know somebody in the Old Testament not being respectful of God's people didn't even get into the promised land. Promised land. His name is Moses. Because Moses didn't honor God in front of his people and before his people. Of his people. In the Old Testament, our teachers, we who are prophets, our assignments are to serve God's people. You are God's people. So in this series, it's called Walk It Like I Talk It. It's a play on me amigos. And I know there are some people, I said this in the first service, who are like, I cannot believe now. Nah, he done lost his ever living mind. This can't be God, that God would allow a pastor to have this group, me amigos, whose words do not prescribe to the Christian faith to lead the intro of the bumper to a series. And I would say to you, God continually uses everything that he's created. And don't you, with your little intellect, my little intellect, over 7 billion people on planet Earth, don't you ever think 7 billion people on planet Earth would not fit in a thimble of God's intelligence? He's infinite intelligence. And sometimes, particularly those who maybe have been walking with God for a while, we start thinking we know how God is going to do something. He says he takes the, the wise in the world and cause them to not see what he's doing because he takes the wisdom of the world and makes it foolishness. Here's what he said. He said, you know what? The world likes getting all the talent and all the top people. He says, I don't do it like that. He said, what I'll do, I'll take the ones the world has kicked aside. And then I'll put my spirit in them and I'll show you all, y'all best can't mess with the rest. And what God does, he says, look at you. This is what he said through the Apostle Paul. He said, look at some of you all. A lot of y'all wasn't of noble birth. A lot of you all wouldn't have been a picking in the litter. But God, that God would take you and I from Holly Grove, 17 Ward. You heard me? And he would allow his Holy Spirit to do what? To work in each and every one of us so the excellency of be of God and not of men. Why? Because he's God all by himself and he gives his glory to no one. Even the intelligent, degreed mind, it came from God. Even your willingness to want to work hard and get good grades came from God. So what we start doing, I dare LeBron stand up. LeBron, look at me now. Look at me, LeBron. I know you're in the playoffs. Look at me. You didn't cause yourself to be 6'8". You didn't cause yourself to be known all the way from a kid. That came from God Almighty. And Jesus Christ, his son, bless you with a gift, LeBron. So in other words, what do you have you haven't been given? People always compliment me. They say, oh, you got some beautiful eyes. I always tell them I had nothing to do with it. Amen. Stop taking credit for what you had nothing to do with. Let me tell you another thing. You didn't get saved because you thought about it. You weren't even thinking about it. Some of us thought we were cool when we had our shirts open and our chest was showing on our hair. Some of us thought it was the life just getting to the club. Ooh, I can't wait. Some of y'all took an hour for y'all in the mirror to get dressed to go to a club. And now when you go back now, now that you're born again, you don't judge people, but you can't believe. I can't believe this. So, when you come into the kingdom, you and I do what's called humble yourself. And we as humans, we got a problem many times because we used to be connected to a being who got kicked out of heaven because of his pride. So this series, Walk It Like You Talk It, 
I wanted to first go back to the church. Ecclesia, Ecclesia, church. And I started off the first service and I said, man, I'm sick of church. How about you? I'm just tired of church. And some of y'all tired of church. Because if I keep going to a place where they tell me a supernatural being is supposed to be there and supposed to manifest or show himself, and I keep going to church and I don't experience, then what am I doing? That's called religion. Religion is when I do all of the stuff they tell you to do, but yet never experience the power and the love of God. Oh, I'm taking communion. Oh, I'm in church. I'm paying my tithes, but I don't know the one who told me to pay the tithe. When I do communion, I don't realize I'm in communion with a relationship with somebody who tells me to do what they want me to do, not me telling them what I want to do. So when you take communion, what you're saying, Lord Jesus, I am in a covenant with you and I have died and now I need you to direct my life. But how many of y'all know we want to direct our own lives sometimes? Now, let me just do a survey and let's see if the Bible is true. It says the way of the transgressor is hard. Let me see if I can get a witness. A transgression is a known violation of a law or principle. Are there anybody here or is there anybody here who violated, trespassed a law? Anybody ever broken a law? I feel I got a few lawbreakers. I got some that's, you broke the law of lying. You just, right? So when you break the law, he says a person that continually breaks the law and go against God's laws, a person that continually breaks the law and does what God does, it become hard to him. I hear Christians saying, Following God is hard. Really? If I decide not to have sex, I don't get STDs, I don't possibly get a woman or a woman get pregnant, how could that be hard? To me, it's harder going to Walgreens hoping I can get this, whatever you take to try to do an emergency, you can't get pregnant. That's hard. To me, wondering and telling my male partner that I'm pregnant, that's hard. Why y'all looking at me in that tone of voice? <laughs> I don't care how you flip it. Single mother, yes, y'all do a terrific job and ladies do an awesome job. How many of y'all know that's hard? Any single mother can just wave like you just don't care. I know they make it look cool and all of that and good. At the end of the day, how many of y'all know it's better to have somebody else to bear the load? Amen. This, I'm not preaching at anybody. I'm trying to get us to reason together. For example, if I can't stop smoking cigarettes or weed and it's beginning to harm my body and I got to take medicine and be in a hospital, guess what? That's hard. Walking in divine health is not hard. Am I right? Like when you're feeling good, all the aches and everything gone, that's not hard. Am I right? But when you and I are doing things outside the scope and plan of God, it makes our life what? So he says the way of the one that continues to break laws is hard. Even run DMC, hard times. We put together rap songs and songs to be comfortable in our dysfunction. Well, the truth is he didn't create me to be living through hard times. He said in the world you have tribulation. You keep trying to do it the world way, you're going to have some tribulation. As a believer, I'll have some tests to grow me up, but not necessarily hard times. So the title, Walk It Like You Talk It, it goes back to Walk It Like I Talk It. There's no one, no being that walks it like he talks it more than who? God. God the Father and Jesus. They always walk it like they talk it. When God says something, his actions are synonymous. 
So if he call you blessed, if he call, where, who was my heathen section last week? Did I see someone pointing over here. This was the he, okay, they got saved. This is the heathen section right here. <laughs> okay, for this illustration, don't get mad, don't leave the church. Last week, if you were not here, I just had heathen. I'm going to tell you, heathen are people that are not in covenant with the people of God and the children of Israel. Those are heathen. Heathen do not have a connection with the invisible, life-giving God. Heathen are people that are tied to the kingdom of darkness. Satan, meaning we're born sinners. Satan is an opposer of God's plan for your life and you fulfilling God's plan for your life. The devil is one that comes in between two to separate them through false accusation. Satan, and I'll, you'll see it in a second. Satan is an opposer of you trying to keep you and I from doing God's will. So if one of the things in line with my life was to go and play tr for the National Football League, he'll give well-meaning Christians that'll say stuff like, well, you know, that's, that's dangerous. No, what's dangerous is you being outside the will of God. Don't you be trying to figure God out because God may want to put somebody in what you call dangerous so he can win them to Christ in that environment. So be careful trying to rationalize in your mind. Purpose. I played in the NFL. I got injured one time. You know, I never thought about being injured. Never crossed my mind. Never had any fear of being injured. Because when you in purpose, and you do what God tells you to do while in purpose, fear leaves when the presence is there. And the presence of wherever he tells you to be. And you, my friend, don't always know where I'm supposed to be. Because you may not be where you're supposed to be. How you going to give me advice on where I need to be? You know how many Christians sitting here, not where they're supposed to be, doing what God told them to do on a daily basis? And you know them saying Christians will try to tell other people what they should be doing? So what am I heathen again? What am I heathen? What am I heathen? This is my heathen section? What am I heathen? All right. My heathen. I got some. Do I have any good heathens in here? Any good heathen? How many when you're in the world, you, you wild out? You, you are a good sinner. Come on. See, y'all like a shame. I'm not going to raise my hand. I'm not going to raise my hand. I, I hear some of y'all right now, I ain't kill anybody. I ain't kill anybody. I never shot anybody. What about your tongue? They trying to protest from Florida, and they should, about weapons. Your tongue. How many people have used, used that semi-automatic on? You can't go to Congress to get them to change that, can you? But you can't yield to the Holy Spirit and he'll help you control not your words, change your heart. Heathens' hearts have not been changed. The believer's heart has been changed. Heart meaning your nature. When we were heathens, we did wrong by nature. And if we didn't do wrong, we did right sometimes even with wrong motives. When you get saved, that's why the first step is get born again. I grew up with great parents. I was very good externally in how I looked. You talking about put a suit on. You talking about communicate. Even though I'm from New Orleans and I could talk New Orleans linguistics. But when it came down to being in front of presidents and other people, I can dress it up. I can go to New Orleans and talk like, where at barn, what's up, Le Farley? I ain't playing yet. You better stop playing with me? No. I can go back immediately like believers. I can do what I used to do today as if I just left it. Uh, Only difference between the heathen and the believers, you change power sources. When you're a heathen, you're connected to the kingdom of darkness and you and I will naturally do things or do it with the wrong motives. Why? Because the heart's not been changed. When you're a heathen, you just do it. Feel like slapping somebody? You just slap them. Now, here's where get Christians confused. 
It don't mean when you get saved, you don't feel like slapping them. So I am bothered by believers who have no sympathy for the heathen. Because you used to be one. So a Christian telling the heathen who's smoking a cigarette, now you know you need to stop that and get your life cleaned up, come on to church. You don't understand the gospel. If I'm a heathen, I will need to smoke something because I'm not living right. So I need to smoke something that's going to cause these mechanisms in my body called warning signs to be dormant. Because if your gas is low in your vehicle, you have a gas light on. Something is wrong if you go to the mechanic and tell him, hey, turn that gas light off. And you never put gas in the tank. Now, who would do that? Somebody who's now taking things to now turn off the lights. That now turn off. It could be a job. It could be a degree. Until you and I connect with Christ and begin living for him, we're going to constantly look for other things to fulfill. We'll never be satisfied. But when we give our lives to Christ, get born again, and give their lives, doesn't it feel better, converted heathens over in this group? Was anybody a heathen last week and you sat in the same area? Okay, now you're a believer. Does it feel a little better? I mean, really, does it feel a real better, right? Okay, let's all do a question right, right quick. How many would honestly say, I've had some struggles as a believer, but for the most part, it's better on this side than on the other side. Can somebody stand up and testify to that, please? Anybody? 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, there's some of you all, and I'll tell you why in a second, you didn't stand up. Because for you, you feel like it's worse on this side. Because at least when I didn't know about doing wrong, I was good. <laughs> and it's only because you are saved, there's a conflict that maybe they didn't tell you about when you give your life to Christ. So, the series is walking like I talk it. When I tell you, I'm t when I share with you, I'm tired of church. In other words, church coming, just coming, 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 and not experiencing the power and the purpose of God. What I know about us as humans, we will repeatedly do things many times without any corresponding changes. Because he says, if I keep hearing the word and don't do it I will deceive myself so I wanted to first start with the church everybody say the church, the church. one more time the church. so let me help you and help all of us what is the foundation of the church can't hear you somebody say the people somebody say who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Can't hear you. Jesus. Jesus is the foundation of the church. You see a foundation. Remember, with God, his words and his actions are always simultaneous. He never says something that he's not going to do. He says in Isaiah, he said, I watch my word to perform it. He watches. That means he says something. The angels and everything that he's created all cooperates with his word. Who's the foundation of the church? Jesus. Who's the king of the kingdom? Jesus. Come on, family. Jesus. So if I was the devil, I'll get believers to be ashamed of Jesus. I'll get, you, I'll get believers to stop even mentioning that name. I'll get them, I'll get it, and I'll make them feel good, and I'll have them make statements like, you know, we don't want to really offend anybody. We don't want to really make anybody uncomfortable. We were over in Israel, and we were praying, and many times the leaders are always asking me to pray or give me a word. We would go view places, and then they had the, the, um, the guide, he'd tell you the historical stuff, and then they asked me to share the spiritual part that connected to it. And each time, unequivocally, not because I'm some good dude, 
I knew the power of the name of Jesus. I wasn't going to go in Israel and all of a sudden say prayers and not sign it off in the name of Jesus. Because a prayer that's not authorized by the Lord, all you did was say words. It has no power. The kingdom of God is about power. And power is when you and I are doing what Jesus says. So Jesus, I want to first, the title today is who before the do. When, it talk, when we talk about walking like I talk it, God is 100%. He does what he says. He says what he does. 100%. All the time, every time. If he say you're blessed, let man be a liar, God be true. If he tell you you are blessed, that means everything he's created, everything from demons to angels to the water, the world, the horses, the cars, everything he's created is ready to treat you like he said. That's what he told, he told Balaam. You can't curse what I blessed. Now the question is, why are believers not experiencing this blessedness? Anybody need a new car? Anybody need a new car? Okay, I got one. I stand in agreement for your new car. All right. How are you going to get your new car? Two things. Stewardship, managing what I got. In other words, that hoopty you got. Maybe you got a raggedy car. Did you say raggedy, hoopty? Simply meaning it's a car less desirable. <laughs> may not be functioning at this optimal, and people may be talking to you about it. But to you, you appreciate it, and you're thanking God, and you're going to treat it as such. Somebody say amen to this. Because it's, it's accomplished, it's a purpose, you, you, you prefer something better. But you know, Jesus said, those that manage well what they have, but you have that hoopty, even what they have is going to be taken away. I'm sorry, just the believing section, right? Even what they have is going to be taken away and possibly given to a heathen. Who manages God's want money well. It's not religion. It doesn't matter whether you believe this or not. The other thing, some of us, you for forfeiting your free stuff. Free stuff is when you listen to the voice of God and you do what he tells you. There are stuff you can't work hard enough to get. There are doors he's opened, they can't close. There are people who want to bless you who can't stop from blessing you. Why? Because he said you are blessed. And when he says you are blessed and you do what he says, you're going to walk in his freedom. You're going to dance like nobody's watching. And when you blow it, you're not going to play religion. You're going to repent. And you're going to say, you know what? I committed adultery. I was wrong. I don't care how your mammy, your daddy, anybody else did when they, before you ever got here. I don't care if your dad was a rolling stone. Once you get born again, you're no longer comfortable as a believer being a rolling stone. Even if you go try to roll again, once you become a believer, the Holy Spirit convicts you, not condemns you. And convicts you of what? That's not the way to live now. You are no longer what you used to be. Somebody say amen to this. And if you're say, confession means say the same thing. Whatever God call it, that's what it is. If it's fornication, he told you stay away from it. He said the body not made for fornication. So if we keep doing it, something is going on in the body. I want the diseases to stop. I want the cancer to be healed. I want these things in the church. He told the children of Israel, none of these diseases shall come on you. If you'll do what I say. The who before the do. A lot of times we start trying to do something before we know who something. You got to know who you are. When you know who you are, we were at the track meet yesterday. I don't, in my head, my head can say, now you know that don't work. It was raining and cold. Anybody remember that? My son had a track meet. And it's just as raining off and on. I said, all right, clouds, that's enough. I was in my truck meditating on this message in between events. And it's just a drizzling and raining and cold. I said, all right, clouds, that's enough. In Jesus' name, hold your rain until this meet is over. 
Now, I know y'all say, now, you know that don't make any sense. (laughs) Now, who can control the weather? Who's the foundation of the church? Jesus. Did he talk to weather? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. He said, when I go, greater works will you do when I go to my father. We got a bunch of believers who don't even believe that. The world, heathen, what am I, heathen? You know how he speaks to you? World, through signs. He has no relationship, no access to you. So he's going to speak to you through signs and circumstances. Believers, he's going to talk to you directly. Because he has access. You on the inside. Heathen, you on the outside. We can't rest until more heathen get on the inside. But when you're on the inside, sometimes you forget what it was like being on the outside. And you stop witnessing. Maybe you see, maybe you go through things. Because the devil will test you. He's allowed to test you to see if you're authentic in this faith. To see if you really believe this. To see if you're really genuine. Or are you hanging with God because it's all good. But oh, when they sucker punch you. Are you going to stay with it? And some of you all are in the sucker punching stage. Well, somebody just haul off. Did he say haul off? Yes, haul off. Somebody just walk in front of you and just punch you. They just punch do in those situations and you'll stay with him he said i've never seen the righteous forsaken no seed begging bread you're in the middle of the phase of developing your faith muscles yeah. when you're a baby get all your prayers answered speak to everything and it happens right away yeah. Yeah. but then he's taking you past babyhood stage because babies are completely dependent on other people he wants to take you to a phase where you become independent And then very few believers ever get to the final stages when you realize that we are interdependent. Where if we don't have you, somebody missing in the body. If I take a kidney out, another kidney got to work harder. Or if I got two and one not working and the one working, guess what's going to cause imbalance in the body? Everybody is needed. You can't just come to church. You're not a spectator. You're a part of the... It's going to come. By you doing what God told you to do within the body. So Jesus, foundation. Who before the do? Who before the do? I must know who I am. Or I will never, I will never consistently do what I am supposed to be. In other words, you, you won't stay with things when you don't know who you are. It'll be hit and miss. So Jesus builds this church. Go to... Uh, Matthew chapter 16. Everybody said the church. church. I want you to do church. Ecclesia. Ecclesia. Church. Ecclesia. Everybody say Ecclesia. That's the Greek word. Ecclesia. That's the church. What is the church? What am I heathen? Heathen. Okay, I need at least, uh, let me get 10 heathen right here. Excuse me. Quick, 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 quick. 10 heathen. I need 10 good heathens. I need 10 successful heathens of all shapes, forms, and fashion. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I see I got five. Come on, 10, 10, come on. Oh, I don't have some heathen representative. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. There. Now, you, you know when you're a heathen, you recognize other heathen, and heathen love heathen. So when y'all come up, just high five each other. So good to see fellow heathen. It's already, it always feels good, right? Feels good. All right. I say church. you'll get here way before time starts and every time you come here you better hear God talking you'll hear Jesus Christ talking to you specifically and corporately all right so these were heathen people that were not born again born born again simply means born from above the real me to come alive I now can hear God What would be an example? In the Old Testament, Abraham, who is learning to trust God, going through the phases in the process like believers go through. He didn't have enough confidence that God was, he, could, he didn't have enough understanding and faith yet that he can trust God not to have to lie. 
That's why some believers still lying. Because you don't trust God. I'm not going to say you're a liar. Because once you get born again, you're no longer a liar. You just don't have enough faith or trust in Jesus to know you don't need to lie. Somebody say amen. amen. Like if the fish you caught, you fishing, is only 12 inches, you don't need to lie. Just tell him it was only 12 inches. But the Lord going to help me get one bigger. In other words, you ain't got to lie because you're not a liar. And when you do lie, you're going to correct. You say, you know what, man, I said the thing was 12 inches. Man, that thing wasn't but six feet. I mean six inches. It wasn't but six inches. I was a lie. I lied. I'm not a liar. In that case, I lied. In other words, I'm going to confess. I'm going to say the same thing. Yes. Do you know God will hang with you? You know he'll stay and just hang around with you? Because you're genuine. you honest. Because when he convicts you, you don't blame anybody. You're not blaming your mom, your grandpa, everybody else. You now know God is holding you accountable and you've been born again and you can stop doing whatever you used to do that's wrong. Somebody shout out, I can do it. I need some uh, Forrest Gump. Is it Forrest Gump or um, uh, Waterboy? I think it was Waterboy. I can do it. Let me hear you say that. I can do it. Can do it. Whatever he asks you to do, you can do it. Because his words in asking you, he's already empowered you. But you don't do it based on a feeling. You do it because he tells you. And when you and I do it, even if you're not feeling, guess what he's going to eventually do? He's going to bless you. You're going to get fulfillment. You're going to get peace. Why? Because you did it. And you didn't allow your feelings to dictate whether you did it or not. So here we have our heathen group. Everybody say church. Church, church literally. Somebody say called out. Heathen in the world, God from heaven now shouts in the earth, it's time, what's your name? Albert. Albert. What's your name? Herschel. Herschel. Gloria. Gloria. Jacob. Jacob. RJ. RJ. God has now in heaven ordained that this day they get saved. So even though somebody may have been witnessing to him, talking to him about Jesus, in the big scope of God's big movie, if I would use that term, he's ordained that today they leave the heathen group and get born again. So what does he do? He calls them out. Called out. Sanctify them. They receive Christ. They're now set apart and they join this group having done nothing right or wrong except believed. Romans 10, 9. That's how they got over here. It is the first infancy stage of faith. I need somebody. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. It's strong right here. Right here. He's a worshiper. He's strong. Don't go by his size. This is a strong dude. So here's what. Here's how you get in the body. You totally lean on what God has done. You believe it. Now based on nothing you can do or don't do, but believe what God says. And he says, go to Romans 10, 9 for me. Quick, 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 Romans 10, 9. If I will confess with my mouth. Here we go. That if, everybody say if. if. Then that means the Holy Spirit, and by the way, how did they know to respond to giving their lives to Christ? The Holy Spirit. Somebody maybe has been praying. Somebody maybe has been witnessing. But now the Holy Spirit has tagged each of their hearts to receive the invitation of Jesus being their Lord. They didn't do it on their own volition. The Holy Spirit stirred their hearts. And then they, they heard the voice of the Holy Spirit and then they said a prayer, but if, everybody say if. if. If means you may not do this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Can't hear you. Saved. Saved. What does the flesh want to do? We want to feel it. We want to feel we've earned it. We want to stop doing some of the stuff we used to do to feel like we're ready for Jesus. No. When he says this, that if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart that God raised, me, raised him from the dead, I would be saved. Save me. What? Delivered from this group of people 
and translated or delivered into the kingdom of his son where you now have a personal intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus you're like the disciples if you just talk with them if you allow him to work with you even on your bad days if you just ask him questions some of y'all don't even ask the Lord questions some of y'all don't have no clue what's going on with your spouse but if you ask Jesus he'll tell you He'll tell you what's going on. He'll tell you how to pray. He'll tell you how to direct it. Why? Because he made your husband. He made your wife. He knows what they're dealing with. He knows what's hurt them. He knows what's deceived them. But guess what? If you'll talk with them, because why? You got a relationship. He ain't got to show you signs. He talks to you directly. That's why you got to talk to him. We go too long without talking to him. And don't let anybody put all this formula and stuff on you. This is a person. Hey, Jesus. What's going on with my wife, Trey? How's she doing? Well, you know, Aeneas, her, her mom passed. Remember that. So at times, she may be dealing with something. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. She may be dealing with It's birthday in April. I'm, we just celebrated. Uh, April 11th, right? April 11th. Well, guess what I did? Lord put on my heart, just send her a text. Encouragement. Well, why you didn't call her? Lord put on my heart, just send a text. I could have called. And guess what? She sent back the text blessing. You just do what the Lord tell you to do. <laughs> Can we just do that? Some of it is just you learning. It. You would have maybe called. He told you to send a text. Just do what he tell you. And did it bless you? It blessed her. That don't mean we didn't talk later on. It was just at that moment. Because maybe she was having a moment and just needed a quick text. That's, by the way, all y'all with these long texts. It's instant texting. Don't send these long messages, all right? If you got like four or five in a text, you're not supposed to be texting, all right? That's just a word out there. <laughs> That's just a word. Just a word. That's called instant text. That means give a quick message, chop that thing down. Amen? Amen? So don't send me something saying good morning spelled out. Just pay GM, all right? GM. I got you, all right? Just a little, little, little help here. All right. So this group here, this group here. This is so important. This is so important. And we're going to go from here. This is so important that you know how you got saved. Had nothing to do with you. That's why he says, by grace are you saved. Not through works. Lest any man should boast. By grace. What's grace? Grace is finding favors in the eye of another. Grace finding favor in the eye, in this case of God. Finding favor means God has found favor in you and given you the opportunity through his Holy Spirit to receive his son. Now, they've done nothing. But the flesh loves to want to feel like we did something. Don't we? Like, and if you don't get this right, you will have problems, inconsistency in your life as a believer. You'll go up and down because of how you're doing. Versus first starting out, I'm saved by grace alone. So we're not even dealing with uh, salvation anymore. We, we're dealing with now a relationship that if I keep doing something outside the will of God that I know not right, I'm going to confess it to him. I'm going to ask him to forgive me. But not only that, I'm going to ask him to help me. He doesn't want me going through this. He's put his spirit in all of the resources of heaven to help me if I humble myself. But if you won't humble yourself, if you won't say, I'm wrong, I keep wanting this promotion, and I don't get it, they keep putting somebody else in my place, you don't have a boss problem. You got a God problem. Because he touches the hearts of those in a charge. When we do what he tells us to do. So when you first get saved, come here. First get saved. This is the Lord. The Lord told us to do this. Put your hands on my shoulder. Right here. When I do this, I am totally leaning on the Lord to accomplish this. Totally. I can't do none of that. <laughs> <laughs> now let me bring this home and it's the last part I'm going to get to today if you don't understand your salvation if you don't understand your salvation you will try to do it instead of asking him to help you do it and if you keep trying to do it you will always fail the first stage of faith is believe. It's believe. That means I am totally 
leaning <laughs> on him to save me. To do what? Detach my heart from this kingdom of darkness, which are the heathen. Give me a new heart, a new heart. The mind hasn't changed yet. The heart, the spirit, the real you, ready for heaven, but the mind has to be renewed. That's why in James he says, receive the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. That's why you got to get in the word. I said this the other day. What would happen? How many, anybody drink coffee? Okay, why can I bend elbows, right? All right, I'm talking to the heathen real quick. Let me, can, I, can I have a moment with the heathen? All right. How many drink coffee? How many sodas? How many are hot chocolate? Anybody hot chocolate? How many juice? What do you think would happen to you if you didn't drink any water, just all other things? What do you think eventually happened to you? You think you have some challenges probably? Anybody? If you don't get the purity of the word, it's the same way. The word is the only thing bathes us. And you got to be careful getting the word from other sources instead of the word. Because many times the other source may have had an imprint on their version of the word. And then they'll put it in a book and believers will start doing it, not realizing the Lord didn't tell you to do that at all. And you'll become frustrated. Because the Lord only confirms his word. He says, if you'll confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So once these people do this, they're saved. Somebody else may say, oh no, you got to be baptized. You got to be baptized. I've heard people say that. There are churches, their whole doctrine. Got to be baptized to be saved. Because if they go and, oh yeah, pastor. Oh yeah, pastor. Oh no, I got him now. Because the Bible says, no, oh, this is what the Bible said. This is why you need a pastor. This is what the Bible said. When Peter preached that sermon, and those people, he said, he said, now when they, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what must we, what shall we do? This was Peter preaching the first message. Peter was the first one to preach where thousands got saved. So he had just finished preaching his message. They're pricked in the heart. Pricked in the heart meaning... Before they ever got saved, God had already been dealing with them. A prick is something you use to pry the animals, to get them to go in a direction. Guaranteed, before they gave their life, before they finally confessed Jesus, and just like some of us, God was already dealing with you. Before you ever gave your life to Christ, he was already messing with you. He was already pricking your heart. It's just this time, this day, he ordained that you would say yes. And they said, they were pricked with the heart. And here's what they said. Then Peter said unto them, this Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, when you read that, it sounds like repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus. So it sounds like he's saying, give, repent, get baptized, and you'll be saved. When if you go and you understand this, you would understand that repent and be baptized don't have the same level of emphasis or intent. And a believer, read this to you. See, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Now, how do I know just practically that's not true? Because when I got saved, my life changed before I ever touched water. My life, my heart changed before they ever brought me down in water. Baptism is not to get you saved. Baptism is your life being washed, symbolic of being cleaned. That's why people, somebody has to baptize you. When they had a covenant with God in the Old Testament, they got circumcised. Somebody had to circumcise you. And isn't it interesting, both signs, old and new, no one who sees you on a regular basis would know you ever got baptized. But they would know from your life change that something was different. Not from your baptism. Baptism is an outward sign of an inward work. It was you going down in the water having died. What's causing challenge with believers? 
You haven't died. You've made Jesus Lord and still got your opinion in it. That would be like him saying, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you shall be saved. That'd be like me saying, you know what, I just don't realize, I don't believe I got saved. It, it ain't that simple. And I stopped leaning. And then I start leaning on my own understanding. Raise up a wise and a faith. Close out with this. Faith, I hear people teach this all the time. Man, Lord, help us. Open our eyes. Faith in the Christian faith is trusting the words of Jesus. Trusting the person of Jesus. He's walking through the crowd. Power to heal because he's a healer. He embodies the kingdom. Not only did you get saved, but you got access to all the benefits, which includes the provisions of God, which includes the healing of God, which includes the power of God. So Jesus embodies the kingdom. He's walking, demonstrating what the kingdom is like. So when all y'all come around, no, I'm sorry, I need a bunch of, uh, I'm I'm, I want to do for illustration purposes because I don't want anybody else to come up. You all are going to be a bunch of people. And I'm going to walk, y'all going to surround me. All right, come on. Come on, just around me. Y'all just get close. Everybody close in front. Just like when it's hard, y'all just walking with me. Because remember, there's a crowd of people around Jesus. I'm walking, y'all just walking, right? Y'all walk, just walk. Now, it's, the crowd is pressed up against him. Come on, pressed up against him. Pressed up against him, right? Now, there's power to heal everybody that's around him. But Trey, please be the lady with the issue of blood. Now, he's walking power of the kingdom. Now, all these looky-loos. Because he got power, maybe you got, you got leprosy. Or maybe you got something on you. But y'all just caught up in the crowd. You don't realize his power, if you put faith in him, will heal you. Will take the depression out of you. Will you, do what? Take the plaque out of your arteries. Will do what? Open your ears. And guess what? Do what? Find the husband for you. Make you aware of the husband. How would he do it? Why? Because he got the power in him. He's been praying. He who prays in an unknown tongue, prays unto God. How be it? And also Jude one twenty says, you beloved, praying in your, pray, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy, holy Spirit, building up, charging a battery. So as he was walking, because he had finished praying, the power is on him. And while the power is on him, you got looky lose. You got people coming to church, they think this is a form of fashion. They don't realize that there's healing for you if you would tap into what Jesus said when you come to church. So this lady, all these looky lose, but ain't no power going because ain't no trust in me. Faith is trust in Jesus. Oh, stop. Stop. Now let go. Stop. This is Jesus. Stop. Stop. Y'all looking at me. Who touched me? And then y'all start saying, what are you talking about? Amen. All these people around you, what you mean? Who touched you? Who touched me? And the lady all afraid. And see what's happening is you're not desperate. See, she had already spent everything she had with the doctors and got no better. But she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I should be made whole. It didn't matter the crowds here. Because when you get desperate and you realize Jesus is your answer, His Word is your answer, and you become desperate, you will spend everything you had. You've gotten a spouse. You've gotten a job. You've gotten a new car. You've gotten a new house. You've gone to a different church. But you still have not put your trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. What did he tell her? She was nervous because this was out of protocol. You know, a, a woman don't just touch a rabbi's garments. But when you get desperate, some of us not desperate. You okay with God? You like, I'm cool. You bless me, I'm cool. I got my own blessing. I went to school. I did what I was supposed to do. But you can't fulfill yourself. You can't remove the lack of peace in yourself. Oh, you got the house, you got the car, you got the spouse, you got the children, but you have no peace. He said, the peace I give you. She was nervous. She said, daughter, he said, daughter, 
He called her daughter. Daughter. I don't know if he had met her yet. He called her daughter. Because anybody, apart from him telling them that knew who he was, the father had already put in them who he was. That lady touched him. He says, daughter, your faith. Notice she didn't say, I believe I receive. Notice she said, I bind and loose that. You can't bind nothing that heaven hadn't bound. You can't be wilding out doing what you want to do then try to bind, uh, bind up the consequences of what you've been doing. You got to first repent. Then you can talk about some binding and loosening. Because if I don't repent, I got the consequences of my actions. He said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has not just dried up the blood, but it's taken care of what caused the blood issue. Made you whole. Faith is trusting in Jesus. That's why the enemy wants to get to church. Don't even talk about Jesus. Just say God all the time. The Father has delivered. Go read it. Matthew 11, your homework is up. He said, all power being delivered unto me. Jesus. Dude need to pay some taxes. Jesus told Peter, go down to the lake. Next fish pull up. You're going to find a coin in his mouth. He didn't tell him like, he te like I'm telling you. He's saying, to you. He's saying to Peter, Peter, everything works for me. I got access to everything. Just listen to my words. Daughter. Your faith has made you whole. Now, all these people were around him. They had access to whatever they needed. Like a lot of people, they go to church and they just, man, this crowd, man, oh yeah, this good, man, it look good here. Never tap into, because when I talk, Jesus talking. I may say it in my own little intellect, but once you hear the word of God, lock in. Because even if you got different things going on, he'll hit your, your situation somewhere during this message that will bring deliverance and you will know for yourself. That's my heart, family. That each and every one of you all know God for yourself. He said, power left me. Because when you pray, power. He felt the power. He knew it went out. Because evidently, anointing has to be recharged. A power has to be recharged. He felt power going out. Something was going out. He felt it. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. And she's no different from you and I. She just has spent everything she had. She got desperate. And when you get desperate, you leave form and fashion. You leave religion. And you say, you, you're like Jacob. I ain't letting you go till you bless me. Let's pray. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Come on. We can do better than that, family. Come on. 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 Can I tell you how much he loves you? Before you ever got saved. Before you ever, ever gave your life to Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave. He said while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, be good receivers. You've heard the message. When you come to church, what I want you to know, and I'll talk about the rest of Matthew 16. Jesus is the church, the foundation. And we as pastors, our responsibility, our teachers, our leaders, is to hear what does the Lord wants to say to this group of people. And if you will listen in, forget what you've learned before, don't come here like you already know that because you heard it. Humble yourself. Humble. What does that mean, humble? mean, I'm going to listen. And I'm going to come and I'm going to listen. This is, I'm a part of the church and Lord is speaking to us. It could be through worship. 
It could be through an usher. It could be through somebody on a parking lot. It could be through a prayer partner. It could be through somebody sitting next to you. Because when you come with that expectation, he's going to meet your need. Not necessarily your want. Because some of our wants is because we've not met the need. He meets the needs. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray.